Welcome to Fishing Britain. This week I take on the 120 challenge at Wollaston Court Fishery near Chepstow. I've had I'm I'm four casts and not a take, so I think it's time to move on again. But first, we're heading down south to the dynamic duo. It's Carl, it's Alex. They're not street, they're country. But it doesn't stop them being cool. Instead of being part of the massive, Carl and Alex are catching massive fish at the local water, the Tanyard Fishery in Sussex. Carl's a bit of luck, wasn't it, Alex? I don't even think it's that big. We've only just arrived and it's all hands on deck. Carl, the elder brother of this dynamic duo, has stalked into a nice fish. And also, the line isn't very strong, I don't want to snap it, so... <laughs> it's alright losing them, but when there's a camera on you and you lose one, it feels even worse. Honestly, didn't think we were going to get one. He's still going, how is he still going? Even if this was like a big fish, it wouldn't still be going this hard. There's another car following it. If this is quite a long fight for a fish of this size. If it, if it was like 25 pounds, I'd be understanding of it battling for this long time. It must, what, it must be about double figures, Alex? Yeah. It can't be that big. Very happy. That's a, that's a funny looking fish though. It's got a really weird sort of bulge in its back. But um, quite a character. I guess he must be over 10 pounds, but probably not over 15, but pretty awesome seeing as we came to go float fishing, came to do a bit of bream fishing on the feeder and on the float and instead managed to pull out a carp somehow. We'll head back up the lakes now and uh, see if we can catch some bream and roach and maybe a few other species. Yeah! Carl and Alex have created a bit of a following on YouTube, uploading films about their fishing adventures. They're popular because they're enthusiastic and capable anglers and are keeping it real. With the carp safely back in the water, we're back on the original spot. Tanyards is a busy place today, but Carl and Alex are seeing the lion's share of action. So what does his mates think about his fishing passion? Well, whilst we were at school, people were like, Oh, you go fishing, oh. Fish boy, weirdo. But then we try and capture all of those moments where fishing is exciting and fishing is inspirational and fun and a, and a cool thing to do. And sometimes we can tempt people, sometimes we can't. Um, most of the time, they still think it's an old man's sport, but... Oh! Oh, yes! And, uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to do this? I've got a bite and it's going towards the reeds. It looks like a little perch. Oh, yes, it is a little perch. That's pretty cool. My first perch of the day. Super! A lovely perch, look at that. And that's the other good thing about fishing is you get to get up right up close with nature. And I, some people just don't appreciate it, but to be honest, that has got to be a work of art. With the chance of getting a young guy's perspective on fishing, is there any cool terminology that we can pass on to someone older? Someone like Howl, maybe? Things like chunk. When I get a big fish, I'll go, oh, mate, it's a chunk. <laughs> Spod some munger. Most of the terms are in carp fishing. Hauling. Oh mate, I'm hauling today. I'm smashing the place up. That's that's what, smashing the place up. Okay, so you've had like two fish in the day. So now you're smashing the place up. I'm smashing the place up now, look at this. It's another little fish. Oh, there we go, look, another species. It's a rud, yeah. Lovely golden scales and red, oh, golden scales, bright red fins. Really nice coloration on this one. Yeah, at least I'm catching, even if they are little ones. Ruddy Nora, there's a phrase for you. Right, we've done Carl, time to speak to Alex, who's already had a bream and is now pulling in a tench. Yeah, brilliant, lovely tench. That's the first tench I've caught this year. The weather's really warming up now. And that is a lovely fish, so I'm very happy. Teenagers are very kit savvy, but Carl and Alex don't seem to be into their shinies. Let's test that. What does Alex dream of owning? He can have anything, anything at all. Some maggots. 
I have to say, yeah, I, I really love. <laughs> they are the best bait. Awesome sweet corn. Maggots probably actually. Maggots are just the best bait. I'm not sure what my grandparents would think of that. I'm going to the tackle shop buying me my birthday presents. Pint of maggots. Brilliant. What about Carl? <laughs> I probably wouldn't have said maggots. My dream gift uh, would be a stretch of the River Wye, <laughs> just my own. We've sat. Oh, my float's gone under. There's a man on my wavelength. Back to Carl and Alex YouTube channel. They've uploaded over 80 films and Alex is seeing himself grow up on the internet. So, which of his films is he most proud of? I think the Quest videos are just, I just love them because we spend so much time filming them. Because on the bank every weekend doing the same thing, trying to catch that fish. And we failed for so many sessions, but when you get that fish, it's so great. And when you've got it on film as well, you can watch back such a great experience. So I, I think Quest for a catfish or Quest for a 20 pound cover have got to be the ones that I remember most. <laughs> Gee! Quest for tench should be in the pipeline. Has Alex is in again. Look at the rod. Awesome. Let's look at it on the bank. Such a great feeling. Can you hold up one of these beauties? Next door, Carl has a gudgeon. His most favourite fish in the world. The humble gudgeon. Took those two little maggots on my little hook and uh, I know they're small, but they are so cute. They are adorable little fish. And the little blue line of scales down the middle. They're small, they're insignificant, but oh, they're lovely little fish all the same. Well, it's been a multi-species couple of hours and the boys are having a great time. There's no doubt they love this sport and now thousands of people can enjoy it with them. To see more of Carl and Alex, go to Carl and Alex Fishing on YouTube. Awesome guys, fantastic. I think we'll be seeing a lot more of those two. Now it's over to the oldest newsreader in captivity. Here's David with the news. This is Fishing Britain News. Thousands of dead fish have been found floating on top of a scenic lake in Indonesia. The mass death of the fish in the lake of Sumatra is caused by a sudden change of weather conditions, according to fishery officials. They died after storms stirred up poisonous sulphur-feeding sediments from the lake bottom. Pressure is mounting for the Scottish salmon industry to clean up its act. One group wants the Scottish Government to consider jailing those responsible for escapes from fish farms in order to help save the country's wild salmon stocks. More than 3.4 million farm salmon have escaped in nearly 200 incidents since 1998. A Warwickshire-based fundraising group is having a sponsored fishing event this weekend. Castaway Cancer, which was started by five friends from Nuneaton, is holding a 48-hour carp match from March the 28th to March the 30th. Raising funds for Macmillan Cancer Support, it'll be held at Broadwater Lake, owned by Packington Fisheries, which is sponsoring the event. American commercial fishery practices need reform. That's the conclusion of a pressure group Oceana in a new report. It ousted the most wasteful fisheries in the United States, showing how the American fishing fleet kills and then throws away 400,000 sharks every year. Then there's the whales, dolphins, porpoises, turtles and these fish. Genadiers, a deep sea relation of the cod. And finally, don't go too close to the water, it bites. An Alaskan grizzly bear attempts to eat the camera on this clip while he and the family of bears fish in the river. And here's what happens when a crocodile named Big Boy met a GoPro. The 13 foot croc chomped through the lens, flooding the electronics. The footage, however, did make it. You are now up to date with Fishing Britain News. Fishing for facts, landing the stories. Thank you, David. Now we've got an envelope from Vineyard, and you know what that means. It's time for the 120 challenge. And we've come to Wollaston Court near Chepstow. Let me remind you what the 120 challenge is all about. It's where I turn up to a fishery with all my fishing gear, except for the flies, because I have to tie the flies before I go fishing 
all within 120 minutes. And our friends at Vineyard have added an extra twist because they're supplying all the materials. So the vice is ready, the tools are ready, the clock's ready. That's all I need is the secret envelope. <laughs> As if by magic or airmail. There's the envelope. Let's start the clock. Now, I was told by the guys at Vineyard that some of these packs would be challenging. So let's have a look. Let's just check them all out. So black tying silk, cartridge, CDC, super stretchy floss, good. Okay, magic glass rib, UV film yellow. Right, we've got some hooks. Oh, we've got some twinkle, great. Hot colored brass beads. We've got some of uh, Jim's wings, and a bit of holographic, a bit of floss. Right, okay, here we go. First fly I'm gonna tie is a simple and easy black buzzer. Reason for that, it works in every lake, but also one of the locals told me he'd be catching an, on a small black buzzer this morning, but with a little bit of flash on the top. So simple, easy, bed of silk all the way down, work it all the way back, start building up that bulbous head. Just a little bit of holographic over the top, just as a wing case, and then finish it off with Sally Hansen hard as nails, and then just leave it to dry. If you were tying at home, then you should put two or three coats on it, but as we're under the time constraints, one coat will be fine. Second fly I'm gonna tie is, is another buzzer. We've got that flexi floss, so we can use that as a tail. That's simple and easy with this. I'm gonna spin it, so it twists back on itself, and just gives me quite a maneuverable tail. So if you're tweaking it, it'll just flex and, and swim under the water. So tie that in, and then just a bed of silk, building up to the thorax, but again, put a little bit of holographic in there, just as a, a bit of an attractor, finish it off with a whip finish, and then cover it with the varnish. As we're on a small still water, I've got to tie a lure. <laughs> Thank you, Vineyards, for putting no marabou, no fritz, no nothing into it. So the closest thing I, I'm gonna use is the size 10 hook. Gonna use the bead and then in the tail, little sneaky tip here, cut the middle of the tail out and then just attach that on. That'll give a bit of movement and then on the body, and sorry to all you river anglers here, I am gonna be using the CDC as dubbing. A bit tricky to do, there are tools out on the market that you can use it, but you just strip it off the side and then just roll it onto the silk and tie it on. Just keep building it up, keep building it up till you've pushed that bead right up tight to the eye of the hook and then whip finish. Right, the last fly I'm gonna tie, a fantastic small still water, is the apps in all different colors. So I've got the olive legs, I can tie that in. I'm gonna use the bead and then tie the apps in, two of the flexi floss out the back, two out to the top, and then tie the bead in the middle of the hook as opposed to right at the head. When it's dropping down to the levels, to drop down level as opposed to dive down head first. Very, very similar to a, a Nomad fly. It doesn't dive down head first, it dives down uh, quite flat. So that's the reason to put in the bead right in the middle. And, and finally, put a body of the micro fritz all the way up. So what have I named it? Well, I'm not sure, but it's an out of this world alien apps. Let's see if it does the trick. Right, been fishing for 10, 15 minutes now, and mm, not as easy as I thought. When I was tying flies, a few anglers are catching fish, but uh, I've had a half-hearted take uh, on the buzzer, but I think this one could be quite a hard challenge. <laughs> Just as I was walking around, Ron here just said, this is the hotspot. So he's actually stopped fishing to let me in. Um, hotspot? No, 
I've had, I've had four casts and not a take, so I think it's time to move on again. Um, still sticking with the buzzers, still sticking with the nymphs. Uh, wind's coming right into us, so we all think we'll go down there, use the wind, get on the cross, swing them around, let's see if we can cover more water. That's confidence, isn't it? Taking the net with me, believing the bag there. Time's ticking on. Um, I've covered most of the top lake, or the one side of it. Uh, talked to one fisherman, he's catching a few fish on the <laughs> red bloodworm. I ain't got any. Um, gonna go on the second lake now. A Little bit less wind up there. Tried to do this and I thought with that water coming in it would be an ideal, but the problem is it's very, very shallow. So I think the fish are a bit spooky and the setup I've got would suit that one. So it's time to get the bag, get the rod, get there, get up to that one, catch a fish. That was the slowest of slow retrieves and the most delicate to take you could ever imagine. Now, when you're fishing yourself, it doesn't really matter. But when you're up against a challenge like this, I tell you what, all that heart's going. My knees are going, but, but get in, get in. <laughs> challenge complete. And let me show you the times, and I'll pause the clock there. Job done. And let me show you the fly. <laughs> yes, it's that, for want of a better word, atomic or alien apps. Look at it. Orange olive legs and that white bead that did the business what a gorgeous fish let's put him back there he goes yes here's charlie with hooked on youtube Charlie Jacoby here. This is my weekly roundup of the best fishing on YouTube. Viewer Philip Ridbeck from Stockholm recommends Swedish guys catching two big pike last year. One of them is more than 18 kilograms. That's the pike, not the angler. It's a 40 minute film and has good subtitles. Where fly tying is all titillating feathers and fur, lure making is pure metal and rubber bondage. British lure maker and viewer Paul Adams sends in his latest film, Making a Soft Plastic Fishing Lure, The Uber Grass. Simon Taylor is a lure and a deadbait fan in this film about pike fishing. He and friend Ashley fish two venues on a day that starts slowly but becomes productive. One of the big hitters in the world of YouTube fishing films is Kayak Fishing Tales here in Panama. They are exploring remote locations packed with a variety of fish, including the granddaddy of all rooster fish. Another popular US fishing channel is Chew On This, which took a party of Japanese anglers after giant Goliath grouper, but ended up hooking cobia that were then a attacked by sharks. The tourists found all this most confusing. Staying in America, drifting for California, halibut is by Thundermist Lures. It's a trip down to California waters. Let's go Russian spearfishing next. Vodola's radio expedition takes us to Snake Island in Cambodia, recently renamed Morocot Island in order to attract tourists to the development there. They find spectacular water clarity and abundance of fish. Finally, we're back in Scotland and it's a hairy day's fishing for From Field to Street. TV. Massive Tay. Salmon fishing action on the Tay Mount Beat has Sandra Robbins hooking a big spring salmon and then shooting the rapids with it on. Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for Hooked on YouTube, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well folks, that's it for another week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you really enjoyed Carl and Alex, well, hit the link here and go watch their other programs on their channel. And if you want to keep up to date with all the other programs we have, please go to fieldsportschannel.tv and fill out the constant contact form. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. I'll see you next week on Fishing Britain. <laughs>